Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the sinoatrial node. So at the moment we're discussing the function of the sinoatrial node. So we've discussed that every second or so, or thereabouts, the sinoatrial node is going to generate an action potential spontaneously. That action potential is going to be conducted uh, and cause action potentials uh, in the neighbouring uh, contractile cardiomyocytes to the sinoatrial node. These contractile cardiomyocytes will spread the action potential to their neighbours, uh, which will spread it to their neighbours, and it will just keep propagating over the walls of the uh, atria. And it won't then, it won't propagate into the ventricles. There is a septum that separates the uh, atria from the ventricles and stops basically action potentials in the atrial cardiomyocytes causing action potentials in the ventricular cardiomyocytes. Now, when this action potential spreads over the two atria, the right and the left atrium, it's going to cause those two atria to contract. Okay, so they will squeeze their blood from the atria into the ventricular chambers. So the blood will be pushed into the ventricles. Okay, so that's atrial systole. So when the sinoatrial node fires an action potential, what it's going to lead to is atrial systole. So I'll put that here. Atrial systole just means atrial contraction. Okay, it's a fancy word to mean atrial contraction. And the blood gets squeezed from the atria into uh, the ventricles, basically. Okay, and um, the atrioventricular valves, the tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the left uh, ventricle, uh, sorry, the right atrium and the right ventricle, and the bicuspid or mitral valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle, those allow the blood to flow in this direction. So they're one way gates that allow blood to flow from the atria to the ventricles. Okay, so now the blood has gone into uh, the right and left uh, ventricles. Okay, now, what's going to happen is we now need to cause ventricular systole. We now need the ventricles to contract. So we need this action potential that has propagated now along the atria to propagate into the ventricles. So basically, in this septum that separates uh, the uh, atria from the ventricles, there is one little gap that allows the action potential to propagate through from uh, the uh, atria to the ventricles. And again, this is the problem with this physiological picture. It's difficult to show this. But again, imagine that we're folding this backwards. Imagine that the real structure is these two things folded backwards. Imagine pushing these two atria back so that they now connect. And then the ventricles are sort of slid next to each other as well. Then... Uh, there's going to be a septum between the atria and the ventricles, and there will be one hole in the septum, which the best I can do really is put it here, okay? Okay, so I will highlight this in uh, pink here. Okay, and uh, this is what's known as the atrioventricular node. So again, this is conducting fibres. These are not contractile fibres. These are cardiomyocytes which go through this atrioventricular septum. So uh, this is the atrioventricular node, AV node, which stands for, I'll write its full name down here somewhere. So the AV node, or the AVN, stands for atrioventricular node. Atrioventricular node. Okay, right. So, uh, basically, the action potential is, has propagated along these atrial cardiomyocytes, and it now gets to the uh, conducting cardiomyocyte fibres in the atrioventricular node, which permeate through this atrioventricular septum. I'll write that as well for you. Atrio ventricular septum. So this is the sheath of connective tissue which separates electrically the uh, atrial cardiomyocytes from the uh, ventricular cardiomyocytes. Okay, so that you don't just get the propagation of the action potential from the atria to the ventricles. And the AV node, this atrioventricular node here, it has some very special properties. It is extremely slow at conducting, so this action potential basically takes absolutely ages to get from the atria to the ventricles through the AV node. And that's so that all the blood has time to move from the atria into the ventricles before you trigger ventricular systole. 
Now, we're going to take rather a contorted path to actually produce ventricular systole, and I want to try and give you the motivation for this. You might wonder, well, why don't we now just let the action potential spread across the ventricular myocytes of the uh, left and right ventricles? Okay, the problem with that is what would happen is the action potential would reach the uh, cardiomyocytes at the top of the ventricles and then it would propagate down to the ones at the bottom. So it would spread from the top to the bottom. That means that the ones at the top would begin contracting before the ones at the bottom. Now what would that cause? That would cause contraction here, contraction then here, contraction then here. You'd be pushing the blood down into the base of the heart and you'd risk the heart just blowing up basically. Uh, or rupturing is the fancy word for blowing up. Okay, so instead what you need to do is you need to take the action potential down to the bottom uh, through conducting fibres and then release it on the normal contractile cardiomyocytes once you've got to the bottom so that then it can propagate from the bottom upwards and then these will contract the cardiomyocytes at the bottom will contract first followed by these ones followed by these ones and then what we will get instead of pushing the heart down to the base sorry pushing the blood down to the base of the heart instead you'll get the blood being ejected up into either the pulmonary trunk here or the aorta okay right and we'll continue this discussion in the next video after the bells have stopped oh they've stopped now so we'll continue now okay right so, uh, the atrioventricular node then. Uh, so, the action potential is going to uh, conduct down. So, we've now had this motivation. We need the action potential to go, be, go down to the base of the heart before we actually release it on the conducting cardiomyocytes. So, what we have in this wall between the two ventricles, which, by the way, is known as the ventricular septum, so the big, thick wall between the two ventricles, between the right and uh, left ventricles is known as the ventricular septum of the heart. Okay, so in this ventricular septum, what you have is a, uh, it's almost like a bundle, well, it is a bundle, a bundle of, con of conducting cardiomyocytes that connect to one another. And I'll show this in turquoise. Now, this sort of almost nerve, but instead of being made up of nerve cells, it's made up of cardiomyocytes, conducting cardiomyocytes, all joined one after each other. Now, these are not capable of conduction, sorry, not capable of contraction, but they are capable of conducting the action potential down them from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Now, this bundle of um, cardiomyocytes which are conducting is known as the bundle of his. Okay, so this is the bundle of his, and it's a, it's a bundle of conducting cardiomyocytes which runs in the ventricular septum between the two ventricles, and its role is to try and take this action potential down to the base of the ventricles before we actually release it on the conducting cardiomyocytes. Sorry, the contracting cardiomyocytes. So we'll continue this discussion in the next video.